So in this movie, in this video, um, we're going to take a look at uh, the way of being able to set up your application so that you don't have to continually enter in more data. Um, there is a, um, there's a facility within Rails that allow you to seed your database with sample data. So I want to show you how to do that in a couple of different ways uh, so that uh, you can easily create uh, test data for your application. So we've been adding uh, data by just typing in or sorry clicking on um, you know, the create uh, button and then entering in the data. Uh, but of course you know we don't want to do it that way we'd rather just uh, uh, have that uh, data entered into the database. And so <clears throat> this is where the uh, the seeds.rb file comes in. So there's a file that's automatically generated when you create your application um, that appears in the db seeds. Um, or, or the db directory and the seeds.rb. Now, um, first way that we can add in data is to uh, just manually type in the data that we want to have um, placed in the database. Uh, and so uh, one of the ways that we can do this is, um, first of all, whenever we see the database, maybe we want to clean out the data that's already in there. And so we could do something like um, destroy all for the, the elements that are in the database. So I have um, in, my, uh, in my application, I've got a model called experiences. And so this is what I want to be able to create multiple um, entries for. So I'm going to start off with doing experiences dot, um, or sorry, just experience dot destroy. Get rid of that. Destroy all. And then I'm going to um, uh, manually type in some positions and experiences. And let me do this. I'm just going to copy and paste in um, some, some data for this. And actually, I'm just going to copy and paste in the data that we already have um, in our uh, <clears throat> uh, in our in our database. And then I'm going to add a few more. But one of the things I wanted you to notice here is that uh, when you do this, um, you're going to have um, a, an entry for each one of the parts of your model. So I have an owner, start date, end date, name, and description, and so I've got something there. You do have to adhere to the, the types, so owner is an integer, so putting an integer there, everything else is a string. So um, now we're going to do this with an experience.create as the command. Um, I am doing an array of these, and so you'll notice here the the array. Actually, let me go ahead and expand this. Uh, and so I have an array. Each one of these entries is um, uh, placed into a curly brace, and then it is comma delimited. Let me add a whole bunch more of these. And again, I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste these in um, so that you don't have to watch me type them. So let me get a list together here. Just um, give me one moment to find that. Here it is. Okay, so I'm going to copy and paste these in. And they're just, it's just a list of, of jobs, basically, right? So, all right. And then the last thing I want to do in my file is I'm going to add in just a little message so that we know. So basically print... <clears throat> Create created experience.count entries. And so this basically lets us know after we've run um, the appropriate command um, what the uh, <coughs> or how many um, elements were, were entered. Okay, so um, let me save this file. And then again, you notice here, this is, uh, oops, 
not actually running the application. Let me start that back up. So you'll notice here that we have four entries uh, for experiences in this file. Now that I've created this seeds file, um, I can go ahead and run the, uh, the Rails DB seeds command. DB seed. What this is going to do again is um, remove all the entries I currently have in there and then add all these other ones in. So go ahead and run that. We should see our, our uh, message created 10 entries. There it is. And now if I run the application okay, and then refresh. Now I have all of the entries that um, I had <clears throat> put into the seeds file. Okay, so that is um, that's one way to, to add in elements. This can be a little bit tedious, of course, um, because we don't want to have to type in all of those. Um, and so I'd, I'd really like a different approach for being able to seed my uh, database. And so let me show you something else. There's a, um, there's a gem called Faker. And so uh, you can, let's, uh, Let's bring up a oops. this is the documentation for Faker. And <clears throat> uh, actually I don't think I quite got to where I wanted to be. Okay, so Faker is a gem that um, allow you to basically randomly generate uh, names or other variables for uh, for different entries in your uh, in your application. So if you're going to create a seed file, you can use something like Faker. Uh, so for instance, here I'm looking for companies. I'm looking for dates. There's a date. Um, I'm looking for job positions, and so <coughs> that's what I want to use here in my application. So let me do that instead of using um, the hard-coded version. I'm going to put in a loop, and I'm just going to randomly generate each of the different uh, parts of my um, uh, of, of my entries into the, the database. So let me comment out the pieces that I have here, and then let me add a loop to the beginning of this. I'm going to create 40 positions, so I'm going to do it 40 times. I'm going to do the following loop. Um, so we'll, we'll create an entry. Um, I just need an owner ID. Actually, I think that I'm just going to use the default user. And then I'm going to do a start date, end date, I need a name and a description. And so for each of these, I'm going to use faker. So faker, um, date, and actually I need to look at the the documentation for date to see what I can use. So a number of different options here of what I could use for a date. Um, I'm just randomly generating this. That doesn't actually even matter to me what the dates are. They just have to be something. Uh, <coughs> but you could create ranges if you wanted to. Um, so dates between certain days. Um, so. I let me do let's see let me do birthday so max let me do a birthday in between the ages of or dates of 18 and uh, I don't know, I'll, I'll just put something in there so so date dot birthday that's what I'm gonna use 
And let me just say that it's a birthday between, uh, let's say, now and I've been in the workforce for 25 years, so let's say just that. Uh, same thing with the end date. Now, unfortunately, you know, these these could get out of order, but I am just automatically generating data, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, let me turn this here. All right, so now I need a name, and so I'm going to choose, I'm going to use Faker's uh, company. And if you look here, there's a number of different things that we could use. Um, I am going to, uh, let me use, oh, it's company. So um, I need name. Faker company name. And then I could use the Faker <coughs> company profession. Um, you just get a random profession. Let me start off with that and see how that looks. I guess the other thing that I could use is job title. I'm going to try company profession as my uh, item there. Okay, so this should uh, this should create 40 jobs for me. Um, so let me go ahead and run seed again. So this should delete all the positions that I had in there. And let me go ahead and run it. I'm going to refresh this. There we go. So I've got uh, dates. And like I said, there these are these dates aren't going to be in order, but at least I have dates in there. And uh, and we could use a little bit of logic, of course, just to reorder the dates and do whatever. I mean, it's, it's probably not that big a deal. Company, and then the title. Uh, first of all, I feel bad for whoever this is because they've had a lot of jobs, uh, but also they've been a lot of different things. But um, it's again, it's not that important uh, what those uh, really should be. So anyway, um, that's how you can seed your database with test data. Um, fairly straightforward thing to do. Two ways of doing it, of course. You can do what I just did with Faker, or you can um, hard code them in. Um, you do want to destroy the things that are in there um, that are already in there and then add those in so that your, your database doesn't just get enormously huge. Uh, you do want to remember to add Faker to your gem file if you are going to uh, use Faker. Also, you want to make sure that when you do use Faker <coughs> and you do add it to your gem, that you do a bundle update. Uh, sorry, a bundle install uh, and a bundle update uh, so that um, your application gets uh, adds in the uh, um, the gems and then also um, gets the most current version okay so that concludes this video